on this. But uh, we're going to go ahead and kick it off with tonight's webinar on the 2021 SEO formula. You guys are probably thinking, what the heck, Sean? There's been an SEO formula this entire time. Well, I'm going to get into what we mean by the 2021 SEO formula. And even though 2021 is coming to an end, it is the pattern that we're seeing moving forward as we start to hit into 2022. And it really comes down to this right here, digital dominance. And tonight I'm going to kind of break down this blueprint uh, of it. But when we really think about it, digital dominance blueprint is everything that we could possibly be doing digitally centered around your business at the core. And that's really what we're going to kind of dive into on all of it tonight. But a couple things, I need your attention, I need you to turn off your cell phones, I need you to get off of Facebook, Instagram, all those other uh, social profiles. Uh, if we could have everybody mute themselves on here, just to make sure that we're all kind of in it. Because if you're a real estate investor, if you're a real estate investing agent, if you're just an agent that's fun, you know, kind of friendly to the investors, if you do anything basically in the real estate space and you're serious about getting better results, driving more leads organically. And the other word that I like to use for organic is free, free leads. Then I promise you the next 60 to possibly up to 90 minutes here, it's going to be well worth your time to pay attention. But before we get into too much, let's talk a little bit about what I plan to cover here for you guys tonight. Big thing that I want to focus on is the latest updates with the Google algorithm. Now, little fun fact, in case you guys didn't know, Google actually has gone through about 13 different algorithm changes since 2020. I'm going to let that sink in for a second. Google itself, their algorithm, the way that they decide who's going to get that top spot has gone through about 13 different algorithm updates changes tweaks in the last year and three quarters now their biggest algorithm update just happened to come back in june and since june we've been seeing a tremendous shift in the way some things are happening online and i'm going to get into some of those tonight. I'm also going to talk about some of the stuff that you might have had in place prior to this big change and update that's actually hurting you, that could actually be hurting your overall results. And then finally, we're going to talk about how do you optimize? How do you optimize not just your website, but how do you really look at this from a new formula structure and get out there and take action on it to make the results Come. So I'm going to basically end tonight giving you guys the step-by-step -step blueprint. If you want to take it, model it, go do it. You'll be getting some of the same results that we're getting and that many of our uh, other clients are getting. Now, who the heck am I? Some of you guys I recognize on here. Some others uh, don't necessarily recognize completely. Uh, some of you guys I haven't seen in forever, and it's great to see some of the names uh, that are on here. But who am I? Why should you even be listening to me? Uh, outside of the fact that real estate's been in my blood since 2011, I've had three different real estate companies, scaled many of those uh, to well over six or, and seven figures, uh, exited a couple of those, sold a couple of those off, still have some real estate in my, my portfolio, doing things from a number of different sides. But more importantly, I'm very active in the real estate community from a digital marketing standpoint. This has become my life now. For the last couple of years, I've been speaking over all over the country on these topics. Uh, I've got articles published in the Think Realty magazine on these things. I'm pretty much accepted uh, kind of across the board as an expert in this, this space. But the one that I love the most is what we've done over the last two years, and that's working with real estate businesses all over the United States. And tonight, what I'm going to bring to you guys isn't just my thoughts. It isn't just what I feel it's literally what all of myself, my team, my business partner at Top Results Consulting and REI Toolbox, what we've been doing for hundreds of real estate business owners now over the last year and a half and really dialing into what we've seen change in the last two and a half, three months and why that's important as we start to close out 2021 and shift into 2022 uh, on there. So 
I'm going to ask this question. I want you guys to go to the chat box. Let me see if I'm able to um, pull it up to see it. There it is on my other screen. Put a one in the chat bot. If you guys in the chat box, if you guys think SEO still really matters. If you don't think it matters, throw a two in the chat box. Throw one down there if you think SEO matters. Or did possibly this Google algorithm change that? And if you don't think it matters so much, throw a two. I see a bunch of ones coming in, which explains why you guys are here. Simple answer, you're 100% correct. SEO matters. Matter of fact, I'm going to kind of caveat from this for a quick second and say SEO matters probably more today than it did a year ago. Let that sink in for a second. SEO today is more important to real estate businesses, to service-based businesses than it was a year ago. We're going to get into some of the, the reasons behind that. But one big one is what we just went through over the last year and a half from an economy standpoint, from a national, global standpoint, right? This pandemic, the way things kind of changed in business, it actually forced Google to do some changes that should have probably taken another four or five years to start to see the effects of. And as we study this deeper, as we start to look into why SEO is becoming even more important across the board, we're noticing that times have shifted digitally in almost like light years in comparison to what normally would happen if we didn't have the pandemic. It's easy to say that we are seeing things today that probably shouldn't have been around for another four or five years. And because of that, service-based businesses are playing catch-up. Now, the good news is those that hurry up and make the shift, they're out in front of it. Your competition is probably sleeping, not maybe paying attention to this. You make a couple of these adjustments, you jump on the train now, you will surpass them and they will be playing catch-up uh, to you. Now, why does SEO matter? All right, when we look at a basic Google search, even just the search, the way that the results are coming back in these searches, Google has drastically changed in the last year and a half to even just the last few months, the way that they publish the results. And I got a couple stats here, but right now on this screen, you're, you're kind of looking at a typical basic Google search, right? We got a couple ads at the top. We've got what's called the map pack in the center, which is really stemming from the Google My Business side. We're going to talk a little bit about that towards the end here. And then we get into our organic section. Now, why is all of this important? When we really look at this, 71 to 75% of the clicks on a Google search fall between that map pack and the first couple organic. There's a joke running around right now in the SEO world, in the digital marketing world that says, if you want to murder somebody and hide their body, the best place to put it is on page two of Google. It'll never be found. The reason why is very few people even get past the third, maybe the fourth result in a search before they go back and they refine their search. 71 to 75% of those clicks are happening right here. If they don't find what they're looking for here, they don't go deeper into the pages. They simply just go back to the nav bar, type in some other phrase or some other variation of the keyword that they're using and the question that they're asking and see if they can get a different result out of it. So why is SEO so important? Really, if you don't show up in these areas online, you're about as good as non-existent. Now, when we really break this down deeper, 67% of those people clicking in this area only will click on the top five. 
So if we've got two or three Google map listings and two or three organic showing, 67% of them are going to click right there and that's it. They're not going to go any farther. So 71 to 75% of the clicks happen in this region, yet 67% of them say, this is it. This is the only spot that I will click. Now, this raises the question, why do I have the ads section? Where does the ads piece come into? Well, I can tell you this much. Ads is a kind of a second tier strategy into it. And one thing that we're noticing from an ad standpoint, I'm not going to get too deep into that tonight because we're not going to really talk too much about how to do ads. But one of the big elements to Google ads is SEO, the power that your SEO brings, the authority that you bring with your SEO structure is doing two things. It's increasing your ranking ability in the ads and it's increasing your costs or uh, sorry, decreasing your costs on the clicks. So what do, what do I mean by that? When we focus on the SEO element and we can get ourselves in the Google Maps, we can get ourselves in one of the, what we call the golden three, top three spots of the organics. And then we're ready for the ad side of things. Even though the majority of people aren't clicking there, if I can just show up in the ad, be inside of that map pack and be inside of the organic side, that is the winning formula. But it takes having strong SEO structure to get the first two elements so that we can really tack the ad element on as a bonus. So this right here is what we do for all of our clients while we're working with them at REI Toolbox and at Top Results Consulting. And I got a couple kind of highlights or case studies that I just want to share with you guys so that you guys can see how impactful the, them being able to focus on their SEO, what it's done for them in their business uh, as of late. So this is Liz. Some of you guys may know Liz and Marie out of the, the Phoenix market. Liz happened to post this not too long ago, a couple of weeks back, actually. She's like, it's, it actually happened. It really happened. We got a lead that found us on Facebook because they showed that because they actually showed up after this person person was actually over on the search engine searching for iBuyers. They then went to our website, watched the video, put their information in. We followed up, and she goes on to talk a little bit about this. And really, they this person came to love them because of all the stuff that they were finding out about them once they found them online, and they kind of got into their uh, ecosystem, so to say. Uh, Chrissy, this was a big one here. She's like, hey, huge, huge shout out. I'm so blessed. I took a leap of faith back in April. God's uh, absolutely come through. I have a mentor, JP, who trained me, guided me, advised me, and led me to top results doing just what they do. Sean and the top results team completely renovated my website where I've received several leads already from the page. Simply because of a better structure, we were able to get her showing up. And I believe this actually happened in like under 30 days of her working with us. She all of a sudden was showing up, got leads in and started to lock a property under contract. This here is actually a, a, a video in our private, uh, private client page that my business partner Roger did giving one of our clients, John May, a huge, huge shout out. 30 days after getting his site live, we started to do some research on John and his company, Rilo Homes. And they were already starting to show up and rank in the majority of their cities for some of the most strong keywords of, uh, of real estate, things that we all know. We buy houses, sell your house fast, get cash for my home today, these type of things. Uh, Kim up in Chicago, I love this one. She's sitting outside of a, a property that she actually got the organic lead from a seller who did a Google search on one of their locations and found them. Turns out this person actually had two properties to sell. Uh, she was making offers and moving uh, through. Again, free lead that came in simply because of the site being done right. Uh, again, Roger giving a quick video uh, shout out and video highlight and breaking this one down. This one was really cool. JP, uh, if you, some of you guys actually know JP, primary businesses in New Jersey. This video here was talking about how we launched his Florida locations. He was ready to go into a new market. And within 24 hours of launching into new cities, his new city pages were already ranking for the top three spots. Currently, almost all of his Florida pages right now, 
he is dominating, owning the number one spot. And JP's currently seeing a handful of leads a month coming through his website from his different uh, areas and some of the different pages that we've been able to get up to the top of the charts. Leads coming in, opportunities being uh, made. So I think it's pretty safe to say, yes, SEO still matters. It's still something as a real estate investor that you want to focus on. So what do we need to really focus on? I'm going to dive deep here. This is a, a screenshot of one of our clients, Mav Property Group. Mav Property Group is located in North Carolina. More, per, more specifically, their primary area is Charlotte, North Carolina. Now, Charlotte's a very competitive market both offline and online. Charlotte's a very strong market from a real estate standpoint. There's a lot of competition uh, in that area. But when we do, after working now with them for, we've been uh, doing some stuff for them for probably about two years at this point. When you do searches like We Buy Houses Charlotte, you can see this little green box down here. They're, they're currently showing up number two. Now, they haven't quite made it into the map pack. You notice the map pack above. They haven't quite made it in there, but they are showing up in number two. When we do searches like sell my house fast, Charlotte, that keyword, they're owning number one in the, the search query for that keyword. We buy houses, Charlotte, North Carolina. You notice they're holding the number one spot. And if you actually look through some of the different brands that uh, are underneath them, uh, you notice back here actually on the, the second one, We Buy Ugly Houses, nationwide franchise, is actually in the number two spot. So they're actually beating out a nationwide uh, brand for that particular term. Now, taking a snapshot, Ahrefs is a tool that we use to kind of evaluate and see which keywords we're currently ranking for, where we're sitting at, what's some of that traffic. If we start to look down, go all the way to the far right-hand column, it says position and start looking at those, those numbers right there and pay attention to just how many of them are ranking at number one, number three, number two. And this is just a quick screenshot. There's pages and pages uh, of this on there. But if I look at that right-hand column, position number one, and then I come over to the first column where it says volume, the volume is telling us how often per month that search term is being searched. So we notice we buy houses, Charlotte, North Carolina is being searched 200 times and they are currently in the first position. So that means every two, every one of those 200 times that term is searched, they are the number one result coming back. You guys let me know if we only had that one search term, if you had 200 chances for people to see you, Go in the chat and let me know, do you think you would get some eyeballs if you were sitting number one and 200 people are searching for that? All right, and then we come down a little bit farther on this list and you notice there's a, a search volume of 700 and it says home buying company. Very broad keyword, but home buying company is being searched 700 different times. And notice they're in, pay, on, in spot 13, which is actually just off of page one. This has actually been a term that we've been slowly trying to move them forward on to get them up there. But if I were to look at all of those column number ones or uh, position number ones, and then look at the volumes of each one of those and add those up, we're talking a couple hundred opportunities for people to see our business every single month. And when we take a look at it from a, from a broader standpoint, they're currently ranking for 431 different keywords. And they are currently receiving about 335 pings of organic traffic to their website a month. Stop and let that sink in for a second. I talk about this to our clients all the time. Your website is like a brick and mortar store. If I put 335 bodies a month in your brick and mortar store, do you think you would sell some product? Absolutely. 
Now imagine having 335 people hitting some facet of your website every single month. Chances are you're going to get some phone calls. You're going to get some form fill outs. You're going to get some people naturally reaching out to you who found you in one of these searches for one of these keywords that came up. And I don't know about you guys, but a free phone call or a random form being filled out on my, my website that I didn't really go and find them or force them or try to beg them to discuss anything with me makes me excited to do business. So how, what are some of the big changes here? What are the big changes that are allowing our clients to get out in front of it that I want to give you guys the, the tips behind it. The big change out of the gate, number one here, you can no longer get away with duplicate content. Why am I bringing this up? In the past, it was okay to kind of mass duplicate a lot of things online and maybe just change a handful of them. It's actually uh, my, my third one uh, or it's in my other part over here. An area where people would duplicate is, I, I used to hear some people teach this and it kind of bugs me. They'd say, hey, go copy this person's blog that's ranking number one. Go copy it, put it on your website, post the link in the blog to the original blog to cite it and give it credit. But just by you having it on there, you would also get some traffic to it. And this worked back in the day when Google really wasn't that savvy and that smart. But through their different algorithm updates, they're starting to notice. Their, their spiders are getting a little more uh, sophisticated and duplicate content, the same content on every single page of my website, the same content on mine that sits on somebody else's that's verbatim, duplicate content is actually starting to get penalized. And what Google's doing is they're giving the person that had it out there first, whatever was the first published date of that, that person gets to keep that, that content and they're starting to strip away and remove others who have very similar or the, the, the exact duplicated content. The other big change is low quality links that are pointing back. This is one that actually can hurt. In the past, it used to be taught, hey, go get a bunch of links pointing back to your uh, website. Go set up a bunch of profiles online. Go reach out to other people and just tell them to put, it doesn't matter who they are, just tell them to put something about you and your website on their site and set, have them point back to it. The problem with the low quality links, Google is starting to become very focused on strong authority. They want the experts. They want the individuals who have a lot of trust, who carry a lot of kind of authority in the space. They want the experts at the top. That's the individual that they're looking for. When they look at a business, they want to know that you are the go-to. You are the, the, the sole uh, kind of owner of this area. And when we have low quality links. So if, if I've got a, a crap website out there that has no real authority to it, I haven't done the right things to it. And I put a bunch of links on it pointing back. This was actually a strategy in the past. They called them PBNs or kind of link banks out there. Google's looking at that and saying, it's kind of a black hat strategy. This company must not be very reputable. They must not care very much. They must not be very... Uh, expertise like right they must not be legit because they're over here trying to get a lot of kind of power off of things that really aren't quality therefore they're going to penalize it so we've actually started to pay attention and really kind of consult our clients and the ones that we're doing the work for them we're very very picky on the quality of the site what is the scores? What is the domain ratings? What kind of uh, traffic? When I look at like somebody like um, Maverick Properties, when we go build links for them, you know, Maverick's ranking for a, a vast number of, of keywords. I want to make sure that the link that I'm going to get from another site pointing back to it is a, also a site 
that's ranking very well, that's got a lot of strong uh, SEO positions, got a lot of strong um, traffic coming back to it. I don't want to go give it to a brand new website that Google really doesn't know uh, too much about. The other big one, and this is a big change since June, Google Maps, or more importantly, Google My Business has become a major factor in the organic rankings. There's a lot of businesses out there. We'll talk a little bit about some stats here in a minute. There's a lot of businesses out there that aren't even leveraging Google My Business to the right uh, capacity. There's a lot that haven't even gone and claimed their Google My Business uh, listing. But G Google itself is really looking at Google My Business and Google Maps as a major ranking factor. They want to reward those that are optimizing their Google My Business profiles, that are leveraging that tool, because Google's really seeing that tool as a very kind of, kind of solidified way to say, this is a quality uh, business. To get your business on Google My Business, to be verified, they go through some checks and they, they basically are kind of putting their stamp of approval that if you're a Google My Business verified company, then we trust you more because you've made it through these, these uh, past checks. So having a physical office to rank well on the Google Maps has become a big thing. They want to make sure it's legit businesses. Back in the day, we used to say, hey, just use your house and then hide the address. Or if you don't want to people to know your address out there, then don't put it, but you won't become verified on there. Google's basically seeing that as what are you hiding from? Why don't you uh, want this? Why are you in business without an actual office? And some ways that people were kind of working their way around it, we're going to get deeper into this here in a second, was trying to find virtual uh, offices. So let's break each one of these down like super granular and give you guys some, some tips here. Why can't we get away with duplicate content anymore? Simply put, real estate companies, like many of you guys here on this call right now, you guys service a very kind of niche area, a very small radius, right? 25, 50 mile radius at most. Inside of that radius, there is a lot of cities and towns. Now, why duplicate content doesn't work is because there's nuances, there's specialty things, there's uniqueness to each of these cities and towns. And Google's change is really focusing on the local level search. They want to make sure that if I'm sitting in, currently I reside in Chatsworth, California. It's a small town inside of Los Angeles. I'm here in Chatsworth and I'm doing searches. They don't want to give me something that's closer to Long Beach or Santa Monica, which is going to take me 45, 50, 55 minutes to get to. If there's a business that does that exact same thing, right here in the Chatsworth area, or what we call the San Fernando Valley. They are focusing on making sure that those search results coming back are pinging the closest to the searcher. So duplicate content doesn't work because there's some specialty things for the Chatsworth area that wouldn't be the same if I went to Hollywood or downtown Los Angeles, or out to the Santa Monica uh, area. So we need to make sure that the content showing up, or the information about that specific search query, is as specific to the local area as possible. Now, it used to be very commonplace to just set up a bunch of pages, especially for each city, and just keep everything the same, but only change the city name that actually is starting to hurt. It goes back to this duplicate content. Google doesn't just want the bare bones basics. They want the individual components. They want the details around it. I always kind of remind people, remember who Google's customer is. Google's customer is the searcher. It's you and I sitting down, grabbing our phone or tablet and opening up Google to type something in. That is their customer. They need to please their customer. So when I or you search something, I expect to get a solid answer back from Google. 
if I'm searching things and what they give me is kind of bland, dry, not really anything specific, it's surface level at best, uh, it's kind of like the 50,000 foot overview, but no details behind it, I'm not going to be happy. And if I get too many of those, I'm eventually going to say Google sucks, their information's terrible, and I don't want to use the platform anymore. So Google's really focusing on me. They're really focusing on pleasing me, the searcher, to make sure that if I search something about an area, I get the specifics that I'm looking for. This one here, uh, I just we just actually did a podcast episode earlier today on our WebBuzz podcast around this concept of micro, kind of multiple micro sites. This used to be called squeeze page sites, landing page sites, single paged websites. And this was a strategy. You'd set up a bunch of these all over the place, target different cities. It basically was the same content on it, but the URL was slightly different uh, to try to target a bunch of different uh, places kind of thing. Google's, again, I go back to the, to the user experience in essence that they're really paying attention to. They don't want me landing on a single page style website or a little micro site that really has nothing but that one thing on it because the experience for me is bad. If that wasn't the right fit, I have nowhere else to go but to go back to the search, try again. And then I go back to, if I continually have to do that and I become frustrated, Google has a higher risk of losing me as a client on the platform. Pages must be unique from one page to the next and really from one site to the next. So if you see a site out there that you really like, it's not as easy as just going and copying it and putting it to yours. There really needs to be, be some uniqueness. So what is unique in this case? Am I saying we got to completely rewrite everything? Every single word has to be different? Absolutely not. However, I'm going to use uh, Mickey, who happens to be on the call right now, as an example. She's one of our clients. She's all the way over in the Baltimore, Maryland uh, area. Now I'm out here in Los Angeles. We're both real estate folks. She does a bunch of real estate that way. I maybe let's say do real estate out this way. I might like her design. I might like her layout. I might like some of the information that she put on there. I can replicate some of that. I can use some of that stuff. However, I need to make sure I also bring in a unique element. I, as Sean, am completely different than Mickey. I look different than Mickey. I care about things that maybe are different than Mickey. My business model, the, what my core values are, are different. And I know this is something Mickey's been paying a lot of attention to with her business and, and really on her website and bringing in things like videos that are very unique to her, her team, the way that they structure, the way that they operate, uh, videos around her properties and the projects that they're, they're working on, right? That is an, a very unique element that nobody could replicate and steal. That's the unique element that Google is looking for. It's specific to that brand. It's specific to the area. And so too many low quality links. I'm gonna kind of break this one down a little bit. This one could get a little tricky. So I'm sure you guys are gonna have some questions uh, at the end of this. So if you do just kind of write those down and be ready to uh, ask those when I open up for Q and A here at the end. But uh, it used to be all about links and it really is still, still today, like the number one way to power up your SEO, to really build a lot of authority online is to have a good link strategy happening. What do I mean by links? Take, take yourself out of digital marketing here for a second. Go to corporate America. In corporate America, if you're brand new to the business and I'm brand new to the business and we both on paper have the exact same skill sets, we've been to the same school, we have the same certifications, we have the same exact test scores, right? Paper-wise, the only thing that's different is names. But the difference is when you and I are applying for this job, everybody from the CEO of this corporation 
down to the hiring manager knows your name. They happen to know who you are. None of them know who I am. The person that's going to get that job is the one that's best known. Even though we're both the same on paper, our skills are the, a dead match. The reason you're going to get the job over me is because there's instant trust in the fact that they know you and they don't know me. Therefore, they're going to trust you more than they already trust me. Now, step back into the digital world. Links are the CEOs, the CFOs, the COOs of corporation. They're the, all the raving fans in that, that kind of chain of, of um, authority there in the corporate space online. Websites today get ranked. Google gives a score to every single domain out there. So your domain.com is what gets rated. And it gets rated from a score of one to 100. 100 being perfect, one being we at least know you exist. If I've got a bunch of websites that are raving about me, that are linking to my website, and they have scores of 10 and 15 and 20 and 30 and 50 and 70 and 80, I'm going to get Google's attention. They're going to trust me faster because the, the sites that they already trust well are pointing at me. It's kind of like the corporate chain all saying, I know this person, therefore we should probably take them on because we kind of know them already. I'm gaining the, the kind of the fast track in corporate America through their vote of confidence. Online, the same thing. I'm gaining Google's fast track with the vote of confidence. But the difference today is low quality links are actually hurting. So when we look at a link strategy campaign, we're really very particular that we don't want too many 10 and 15 scores. We want a good blend of the low 10, 15s. We want a blend of the 20s and 30s. We want a blend of 40s and 50s. We want to make sure we're going after and getting the blends of the 70s and the 80s so that we have a good blend across the spectrum. And we're not just stacked up with thousands and thousands of links, but they're all low quality, 10, 12, 15, this type of uh, thing. Now, the good news is the Penguin update kind of addressed this uh, on there to where Google is starting to kind of get rid of websites that have really, really poor uh, quality scores. So if a spam score got too high, even though they might have had a, a decent domain score, if things like their spam score gets out of control, uh, or if they start noticing that the, the structure uh, didn't kind of fit their, what they're looking for anymore, they're kind of getting rid of the, the, those changes uh, on it. So it's making it easier to identify good quality sites. We just got to do the work to get to them. Um, the other one is, uh, this is more for you guys to go do here is go and do a review of those websites out there that have your stuff on there. More really, it's, it's around sites that have profiles. I know when we sometimes build business credit, we got to go create a profile on this particular company or go to this website and fill this thing out. And we end up putting things like our business address, our phone numbers, our website, because it asks for these things. Well, if some of those are actually bad and not really of quality, those type of links coming back could actually uh, kind of hurt us. And you'd actually want to go and remove those type of uh, profiles. This is something we do uh, a lot for our done for you clients. We're always reviewing which links have we built and double checking the qualities of those, those locations and making sure that we remove anything that's of a, a low quality uh, score. Um, this one here, I'm going to get into a little bit deeper here uh, in a second. So number three, this one here is the one that ties to the Google Maps. And I'm going to spend a little bit more time here. We're going to talk a little bit more about how to really rank on Google Maps because it is that, imp like that important uh, to it. Google Maps has gone through a major change since the, the late Pigeon uh, update. And the biggest one was your primary address 
has to be local to where you're trying to rank. Really, the, the, the address kind of took a toll here. Google started to look at the GMB listings that had multiple fake addresses. They're really pushing to verify the address, that primary address that you put on. I can tell you this much. I literally made a change to just the way that the uh, street name was written on ours uh, about a day or two ago. And just by changing the way that it was written, because I noticed the way we had it written versus the way like USPS or uh, UPS, anytime we mail something, I noticed the, the style that it was written was different. So I wanted to change it to make sure it matched that. And just by changing the format of it, Google immediately put our profile, our GMB, back into a, a, a review status. And we have to wait for them to review it to give us back that verified uh, element. That's how important something as simple as the address. Now, in the past, we, we used to actually consult on this and say, hey, go use a UPS store or a mailbox type place, a virtual office, something like that. And that back then worked. You could go to the UPS store, get yourself a, a mailbox there for like 20 bucks and use that address uh, as the business address because you could get mail delivered there. Google's going away from that. For your address to actually work as a at, at the, the GMB level, it needs to be an address that actually has a way to have something shipped to it that is not just a box. There, Google's gotten smart enough they kind of know all the UPS store addresses. So even though we've got the address and then we've got this like suite number or box number or something like that, that is not uh, working anymore. However, what is working? What are some alternatives here? Organizations or places like uh, WeWork, Regis, some of the co-working office spaces, they will have virtual office rentals. That is actually able to work in, in this space of virtual office only because there's an actual receptionist there. It's a known address that has multiple businesses in it. Our corporate office is actually uh, under one of these. It's based out of Reno, Nevada. We're not in Reno, but that's where our office is based out of, our corporate address. And there's probably two or 300 uh, companies that are quote unquote registered to this, odd, uh, to this address. The reason it works for us is because that address actually staffs a receptionist at the front that if somebody were to come in and ask for top results, they'd be able to, to guide them into how to contact us. If something got mailed there, they can scan that, that person can take that, scan it, get it to me or get it to my business partner, Roger. Because there's a receptionist there, it works. Now, WeWorks, Regis, some of the other kind of co-working, co-share type office places, they have these small rentals uh, for the virtual side. If, if this is going to be a focus for you, if you really want to kind of own and, and start ranking in the Google Maps, I would encourage you, even if you're going to work from home, I would encourage you to look into renting one of these virtual office spaces. Sometimes they're as cheap as about 30 to 40 to maybe $50 a month to have it because it's going to give you the leg up. The other way to do it is to use your home address and let the address be shown if you're going to work out of your house. The difference here is Google, Google understands, especially since the pandemic, that more and more people are working remotely. They're working from home. The difference is they're rewarding commercial level offices over residential home offices. So by having that residential address up there, it's going to get through, you'll be able to verify it, it will help. However, it would give you better power, it would give you a, a better kind of um, trust with Google, if it was a commercial level building. So something to kind of jot down, I'd encourage you look into your area, see if you guys have one of these like WeWork, Regis, there's probably 20 or 30 different brands out there now, of these co-working, co-share spaces and see about getting maybe a virtual office 
uh, Adam. They've got a number of other ways uh, that they do their, their rents as well uh, on there. Um, I already talked about this here, using the home address, uh, but then have the, the address hidden on it. This is like a major, major no-no to Google. It's an immediate flag to them where they wonder, what are you trying to hide? Why'd you give us the address enough to verify it, but now you don't want to have it visible for other people? What's going on? And that, that simple just hiding of it kind of triggers a, a red flag um, to them. So what are some of the other things that have changed here? Old-fashioned SEO is no longer effective. Back in the day, we used to do stuff like just keyword stuff the crap out of, out of a page. Just use a bunch of keywords. Uh, you've probably been on some of these sites in the past. You start to read it, and you're like, I have no idea what that just said. It just said a bunch of words. That used to work to ping the algorithm to get something to rank. Now it's completely against, it's, it's really looked at as like a black hat um, strategy and Google's actually removing and penalizing and getting rid of uh, each of those. The big one that I want you to take away from here right now on this slide is the new SEO approach really requires you to focus on the user. If you guys start to listen and pay attention to the individuals who need what you kind of do in your business, you know, within your marketplace and your style of real estate, if you pay attention to that and you develop, design, publish, put things to your website that is leading with the user first, meaning it's going to focus on the user primarily, not so much focusing on getting me business, you will satisfy Google, you will look good to them, and they will start to reward. I go back to this. Google wants the user to be able to get to your asset, whether that be a page, a blog, something, a video. They want them to be able to get there and find value. Find value so much that they click from that to something else of yours and then to something else of yours. And when Google starts seeing users coming to your assets and not just consuming quickly, but going deeper into your process, going to more of your pages on your website, spending time on that website, they see you as a value to the, to the user. And that's a bonus to them because that means other users will find value in you as well. Therefore, they're going to pull you up in the rankings quicker to make sure that when somebody searches this thing again, other people find you just like this person uh, did. So what are some of the new, fank, uh, new ranking factors here? What are some of the factors that you guys really got to pay attention to? First one is click-through rate. What do I mean by click-through rate? Click-through rate is very simple. When I do a search, the search query comes up. The click of that first ranking, second ranking, third ranking, by me clicking on it and going to look at it, that is a click-through. It's also what I just talked about. If I click onto that, let's say you wrote a blog about stopping foreclosure in whatever, Los Angeles, California. And I happen to be searching for that. I land on it. I see that search result, boom, I click on it and I start to read that blog. And through that blog, you're also telling me about other things that you have or other ways, other information on different elements of the foreclosure piece and they're hyperlinked. And I start clicking on those to go check those ones out. And then I click on another one and go deeper into it. This click through rate is the leading factor for Google. It's, the, it's almost like just tickling Google saying, hey, pay attention to me. They love me. They're clicking on everything that I give them. The other one is scroll rate. Scroll rate is basically how far down the page do they scroll once they get there. The farther down a page they get, the more valuable you look to Google. Google's looking at that as there was obviously something that got their attention that forced them to scroll. And the farther they're scrolling, it means they're more engaged in what you have. So scroll rate is another really big one. Time on page. Time on page 
is just what it sounds like. The longer they spend there, the better. So if I'm going to write a blog article, or if I'm going to write a pillar page on my website around a specific service that I, that I offer, I don't want to write two or three sentences because that's only going to take somebody about 20 seconds to read it. I want to write something that's very valuable, that's knowledgeable, that keeps their attention, that's maybe something that's going to take them two or three minutes to read through. Because if they're sitting on my website for two, three, four minutes reading this, they've scrolled down the page, maybe there's some other stuff in there that they clicked on, we're starting to stack a lot of these ranking factors now to really get Google's attention. Now, the number one factor that will hurt you the quickest is bounce rate. Bounce rate, this is something I encourage you guys to watch very, very closely. What is bounce rate? It's this simple. If I land on your website and two seconds after getting there, I realize, oh, this wasn't the one that I wanted to click on. And I clicked the back arrow and I did nothing else on your website. I didn't scroll. I didn't click on anything. I barely stayed there for about two, maybe three seconds max. And I backed out of that search. That is a bounce rate to Google. If the bounce rate gets too high, Google starts looking at it as I don't, they, they start to kind of question we're not really sure what you were putting in here that got our attention to rank you for the search terms because nobody's finding any value in this page. They're jumping right off of it. Therefore, we don't even want to bring it up anymore. And they, they almost ignore it from that point forward. So bounce rate is something you've got to watch very, very closely. I always encourage our clients to try to keep that bounce rate beneath 30%. The lower we can keep it, the better. But if we start getting above 30% bounce rate on our websites, we've got to start to question, what are we doing? Because it's going to start to give us a negative uh, effect. The other one is number of citations, which is really just other um, kind of uh, platforms out there. Uh, Yelp is a citation. Uh, if you were listed on Zillow or something like that, that'd be a citation. But the big one is reviews. I'm going to get deeper into to reviews here in a second, especially from a GMB standpoint. Reviews is a huge ranking factor. And I'm going to tell you guys, here's how powerful reviews are. When uh, Roger, myself, and a couple other of our clients, we were just in Baltimore a couple of weeks back, and we were trying to figure out where do we want to go for dinner? We're, we're in Baltimore. We know it's Crab Town. Right? Everybody loves crab there. Crab's the number one thing. We're trying to find a good seafood place. All we typed in was seafood restaurant Baltimore. And immediately the Google map section comes up. And we start scrolling through the, the Google Maps section. And when it literally was the reviews of this place that made us pick it. We didn't know what it looked like. We didn't even know where it was at. We didn't even look at their menu. It was just the mere fact that when we were scrolling through those, those Google My Business rankings, this one stood out. It had 4,400 reviews for this restaurant and it was carrying a four point something star rating. It was almost five stars with 4,400 reviews. There wasn't another restaurant that came up in that search that even remotely came close to that many reviews. And we literally looked at each other and just said, if it has that many reviews and it's over four stars, it must be worth going to. Let's go. And I'm not kidding. When we pulled up to the place, had we done it in reverse, had we decided on the place, drove there, we probably would have second guessed going in. We probably would have wondered if we need to pick a different place because it did not look good. It did not look like a place that people would rave about. But because the reviews caught our attention initially, we overlooked all of that stuff when we got there. Hands down had a phenomenal uh, dinner. Reviews for every business. That was a, a restaurant example. But think about what you do as a real estate investor, a real estate specialist. You're helping people with some of the most stressful, irritating, and downright embarrassing sometimes situations. They want to know that others have found value in you, that other people trust you, that other people have had a good experience. These reviews are huge. Google looks at it the exact same way. If you've got good reviews, you've got a lot of them, you must be kind of creditable, right? You must be an expert. You must have some authority if that many people are raving about you. 
Therefore, we're going to help you in the rankings because of this one little uh, factor right here. It's not the be all end all, but is a huge piece uh, to the puzzle. So do a quick uh, little kind of review here. And we're getting close to being able to open up for some questions for you guys. But number one here is figure out the most important keywords that are based around your service, your service area, and really understand what the search volume is. I'm not gonna get into how do we do keyword research tonight. We'll probably do some other webinars in the future on this topic. Roger and I have done a ton of episodes on the WebBuzz podcast where we've gone into some easy ways of doing, some quick ways of doing keyword research and then some little more advanced ones. You can go over to topresultsconsulting.com, click on the podcast tab and go back. I think it's episodes number two, three, four, somewhere in that range uh, where we did a really deep dive into keyword research on it. But you wanna figure out what are the most important keywords and the volume around it. You're gonna use tools like uh, Google's keyword tool, uh, WordStream, SpyFu. Some of these are paid ones. Some of these are free, Google AdWords, uh, these type of things to, to do that word, uh, that, that search. From there, you wanna make sure your website is set up with very unique pages targeting those keywords, unique content around those keywords specific to your service and your service area. Our rule of thumb is you should at least have a page for every single one of your services. You should have a page on your website for every single area that you're going to do business in. And you should have very specific pages for your unique niche of people that you're really kind of ideally focusing on. All of them having very specific keywords to them and very specific information um, for them. Number three, you want to optimize your website thinking about the user. Go through your website as the homeowner that's stressed out, that's frustrated, that's up at 2.30 in the morning. Put yourself in their situation or their shoes here for a second and go through your website and ask yourself, if I was dealing with bankruptcy, foreclosure, probate, whatever it might be that I want to focus on, if I was in that situation and I landed on this website, would I get value out of it? Would I feel like I got enough? Or would I feel like I need to go somewhere else? If you're answering it with, I got to go somewhere else, then start identifying what are the areas of your website that you need to improve, go do the keyword research, start building the different elements, start enhancing and, and kind of optimizing those, uh, those areas. You also want to optimize your site for what's known as on-site optimization or on-page SEO. This is leveraging the keywords that you just found to put on there. And that is different than off-site optimization. Off-site is stuff like YouTube, social media, other um, platforms. At the beginning of this, I, I mentioned I have articles published in the Think Realty magazine. That's off-site optimization. I have articles out there on somebody else's platform that are building my authority and trust uh, and pointing back over to us as a, as a way to help optimize our side, but it's not just on our uh, website. More importantly, I can't emphasize this one enough, track your results. Every 30 days, we dig deep into the results of our clients. And when we're, we're working with them in our more advanced packages, more of our one-on-one -on -one services, every month we're taking a look at this and we're bringing the results out and showcasing, here's where you were at last month. Here's where we were able to move it before. Here's how much search traffic we got. Here's how many pings to the website we got. Here's how many forms we noticed got filled out. Here's how many people were clicking phone numbers. Here's where your Google My Business is at. Let's take a look at the analytics behind Google My Business. We're always tracking to see if the adjustments we're making is giving us re better results. And if not, we want to adjust differently to try to get a better uh, result out of it. Now, strong on-site optimization comes down to this. This will, if you follow this, Google will start to really love you. Strong websites with good content and user experience. UXO versus SEO shouldn't be the kind of equation. It should be user experience 
with the search engine optimization in there. How do I use keywords, but deliver value is where I always go back to think about what is it that they need to hear the most and tell it to them, give it to them, put that information out there because that will benefit the user. They will feel better. They'll do more for around your uh, assets. Google will reward you uh, for that. How do we do it? Leverage stuff like multimedia. That helps improve on page time. This is a little inside trick, little inside tip um, for everybody. Uh, hopefully you guys kind of take this one and run with it. We teach our clients all the time, go do video. If you're going to write a blog article on, let's say, stopping the foreclosure process, don't just do the blog, but also shoot a video. Upload it to YouTube, which happens to be owned by Google, second largest search engine out there. Upload it to your YouTube channel and then take that video and embed it on the blog. The reason we're doing this is it's improving the amount of time somebody might spend on that. Some people will skim the reading. Others might want to watch the video. If you've given them multiple ways to consume this, you're improving the likelihood that more people will be able to get value out of it. If I only write and everybody coming to my website hates reading, I'm not bringing much value. It doesn't matter how great that article is or how great the information is. They don't like to read. They're looking for a video. So by having the video on there as well, this is a way of improving that UXO, but it's also giving us another opportunity to use the keywords to tell Google, in this case, over on the YouTube side of things, that we have a, an asset around this phrase that can benefit people. Uh, I talked about this one before. Another strong kind of user experience piece is pages for each of your services. Don't compile everything into one page and talk about everything that you can do as a real estate investor. Break that out. Have individual pages, individual articles around the different services. Same thing for your cities. Out of the gate, we help our clients optimize six primary uh, cities right out of the gate uh, for it. Again, we're pinging the local level when we start to uh, do this. Another one is keyword in the title. This is known as the H1 when we code. Your title of that page the title of your blog should be the keyword. One of the biggest like no-nos that I see and why people are struggling in the real estate space, there's a uh, particular platform out there that their homepage, the H1 tag, the title of their homepage says, get your dwell score. Google is basically relying on that title to tell them what is this content about? So a, a real estate website that says get your dwell score in its title tag under its H1, Google thinks this is a dwell score company. This is a, a company, this is a website about dwell scores. So it's going to only try to categorize it when people are searching for things like a dwell score. Well, we all know that dwell score doesn't it's not even really a, a real thing it's it's something that this platform happened to come up with nobody's really out there searching for dwell score so would that website ever show up probably not and it's simply because google is confused as to what it actually is so really pay attention to your keywords your titles make sure they've got the h1 tags uh, around them that are appropriate to what it uh what it has the meta description has to sell the click. What do I mean by the meta description? If you guys actually look into the background of this slide, there's been a background image that's been consistent throughout this entire thing of a Google search. And it says, uh, you know, the 2021 SEO formula for plumbing and HVAC and home services and um, the small text. You know, on this web webinar, we're going to cover how to set up your website and all this stuff. That is the meta description that meta description has to sell that person. It, it has to kind of entice them and make them want to click. So you want to make sure the meta descriptions for each one of your pages is written in a way that sells it. So when it shows up in search, people actually see it enough 
and read it and say, ah, I got to click on that one. This one here is huge. It's called the NAP, name, address, phone number. Your name of your business, the address of your business, the phone number of your business needs to be in the footer of your website. The footer is the very bottom section of it. The NAP is a huge element to Google. Name, address, phone number. You want to make sure this is consistent everywhere that you put the name, address, and phone number of your business out there. If it's on Facebook one way, it's on your website a different way, you put it in a, a YouTube description a different way, you open up a, a profile online on another platform and you put your address and everything else uh, into it completely different or you use a different phone number here, a different address here, or you name your, your business different elsewhere, it starts to look like a completely different business to Google and they can't draw the correlations to all of it. You wanna make sure the name, address, and phone number is the exact same in every footer page of your website and everywhere that you're putting uh, it out there in the, in the World Wide Web uh, sector. This one here, this is the one that really brings kind of what I call the ammunition to your website. If your website was a really good machine gun, blogs with ongoing updates, basically a good rule of thumb is minimum one blog a week. In our more advanced packages, when we're working at a, at a very advanced level with SEO, really getting our, our clients kind of sped up to the, to the results quickly uh, and keeping them there and I'm really owning number one across everything, the MAV property group kind of example, we're publishing eight blog articles a month. That's two a week going out for that uh, brand. Google wants relevant, consistent content coming out because they want to make sure that the most recent information is what is available for that user, for that searcher. So how do we do that? We're always publishing new blog articles, even if it's the same topic that maybe we wrote on last year at this time. We're still going to write it again, but we're going to write it now that it's 2021 and we're gonna write about some of the uniquenesses that maybe are out there. Things changed from 2020 to 2020, 2021 uh, in a number of areas, especially when we start looking at things in the, in the real estate space like the moratoriums and, and some of the other restrictions that were, were out there. Things are changing, therefore the content needs to change to make sure people aren't reading something that's old and outdated. So blog consistency, if you could write that down as a goal, it'd be one blog article a week going out and being published uh, to your website. Now from an off-site, uh, off-page, off-site element, go claim and optimize your Google My Business uh, listings. The other thing that you guys can be doing is go out and start setting up online profiles. That's what citations are. Go out and set up online profiles in different elements that make sense for your industry. Uh, if you're a real estate agent, you want to make sure that any organization out there that is for real estate agents, that you've got a profile on it. As an investor, any agency, any program, anything that's out there that has like a membership database, uh, your local chamber of commerce type uh, organizations, anything that you can do to create a business profile online, you want to go create a lot of these uh, out there. Those are a lot of noise being built up. This one right here is really huge. Build up your online reviews. If you haven't really done much and you don't have sellers or contractors or people that you've done deals with to go to, then start going to as many friends, family, um, associates, real estate agents that you, you've done work with. Somebody that at least knows you and can write something positive about you the person, you the owner, that's going to help. The goal would be just get as many online reviews as possible and always be focusing on getting those reviews. There's never a number that's, okay, I kind of hit that number, I'm good to go now. You're always wanting to get more reviews. This one here is a little bit more advanced. It's a little trickier to do. Uh, but you want to start building authoritative kind of links coming back 
to your website. This one here is a strategy. We actually go out and kind of recruit, in essence, sites that are looking for content, that we can produce the content for them with the kind of understanding that we're going to put a link back to one of our clients' websites on there to help get some uh, power. There's a lot, especially in the real estate space, there's a lot of kind of basic information style websites where they, they're relying on people uh, like you and I, businesses who have something good to say, we, we've got some expertise, we can write about some things, we can produce content around it. They rely on us to provide that content because they're not going to sit and write 20, 30, 40 different uh, articles a week to make sure that their website's always got um, you know, fresh content hitting it because that's the sole purpose of their site. We actually go and recruit. Now, when the authority score of those type of sites get to a certain level, we actually have to pay. There's actually a cost that goes into getting that uh, article on there because if somebody's got an authority of 50, 60, 70, 80, Google really trusts them. They're getting a lot of uh, traffic. There's value to us having that there. Uh, and they know that. And that's why they sell the, the ability to be able to publish uh, to their, their sites. Now, I'm going to finish with this. The secret to getting ranked on the Google Maps. Everything that I just went over right now, all these different online profiles that you can do, all these different places, all this kind of, like if we looked at this snapshot right here as the web, this is what's going on in Google's mind. It's seeing you all over the place and it's trying to draw all the correlations and bring everything back. But the key to getting ranked on Google My Business right now is reviews. Once you set up that profile, once you verify it and, and become a verified location and you've got all of your core elements, your name, your address, your phone number, um, photos of your business on there, and you've got the core element on there, the key behind Google My Business is reviews. The more you can get people leaving you reviews on Google, I get it. Facebook is still a little bit of, of value here and there, but the the Google reviews is becoming more and more the focus. And the faster you can jump on that train, get those Google reviews coming in, the faster you're going to start to see results in that uh, Google business map section and, and starting to see uh, the rankings come in. Now, I'm not going to go through each of these as the, as the review. Uh, do want to open up for some questions. Uh, here in a second. Uh, but before we get to the questions, I do want to throw this out there. If you guys are looking at this, if, if you kind of got this information, you're like, man, this is a lot. And I want to just double check what's going on with mine. We're offering right now a free SEO review. On that review, I'm going to analyze your online visibility. We're going to pull in a couple of tools, kind of like I showed you with the Mav Property Group. We'll be able to see what, what keywords are you ranking for, what uh, kind of traffic is that bringing to you? What's the authority score of your, your stuff doing? We'll be able to kind of look at from a ranking report uh, and kind of show you where you're currently at. We'll be able to analyze some of the online reviews, the reputation, some of the stuff that's out there. We can help you analyze the social presence. Uh, we're going to also spend a little bit of time and analyze your website conversion effectiveness. What does it look like? Is it focused on the, uh, the user? And out of that call, I'm going to give you Basically, here's what you need to go do. We're basically going to take a look at here's where you're at. Here's the changes that you need to make. And if you make these changes, these are some of the results that you should start uh, to see. If you guys want to kind of jump on one of these calls, it would be private. You, me, that's it. Uh, possibly my business partner, Roger, would jump on those as well. We'll be on Zoom. We'll share the screens. We'll kind of dissect it all. Take about 30 minutes or so head over to the link that you see down at the bottom of the screen here, just reitoolbox.com, reitoolbox.com, and book yourself a breakthrough session. On that, we're going to dive deep into this SEO analysis and really kind of give you the exactly what, if you were going to be one of our clients, here's what we would tell you to do. Here's what we would go and do uh, and go from uh, there. Give you that report so that you can kind of take action on it and start to Get some results. So with that I'm going to actually de share so I can finally see you guys. I've been sitting here for like the last, uh, I don't know, hour plus with nobody in front of me. 
sometimes I wonder if anybody was even there and listening, but uh, I'm going to expand this out. And uh, nobody's got the cameras on except for Mickey. Love seeing Mickey, but uh, I'm going to open it up to questions. If you guys have anything, feel free to unmute yourself, ask away. Uh, if nobody's got any questions, that means I either did A, I gave you too much and your like, brains are dripping and you don't know what to do, or B, I gave you all the answers, you're all golden and you're perfect and you can go make it happen. So uh, I'll open it up. Who's got some questions? I see some cameras coming on. Does that mean we're going to have some questions? No, nope, nobody's got any. All right, then. Must have been a perfect webinar. <coughs> Mickey, what do you think? Was it a perfect one or something? I Sorry, think you I have, has a question. Go ahead. Yeah, I had to step away because my kids were screaming, so that's why I still had the microphone on. <laughs> What's your question? <laughs> Uh, one of the questions is like, how do you find your, what's the best free tool out there to allow you to see your ranking, see like what's the weight of your page? Uh, as far as kind of seeing where you're at on there, the only one that's free that'll give you some data, it's not going to give you a ton. Again, free tools are just that, they're free tools, We're right? That's the trade-off. It's free. We're not going to get the most accurate or the, the, uh, the best uh, data out of it but um it's called moz m-o-z it's a plug-in that goes on to google chrome you can uh, attach it as a as a chrome extension and it will give you kind of the basic it'll give you what your domain authority score is it'll tell you how many links it's been picking up out there that it sees for you uh, it'll show you what your spam score is it's not going to get too deep though in the free version of it on, hey, what are the keywords that you're showing up for? What aren't you? Uh, that's when we start getting into some of the paid platforms. Uh, and that's, you know, as, as an agency, we've got all of these tools. We pay for many of them to be able to do this deep dive uh, into it. But Moz, M-O-Z, just go to Google and type in Moz. You can go get it. It'll be an extension that you can tie into Google Chrome. Uh, and then you'll be able to turn it on. And you literally could see this for every website that you ever go to based on what Moz is saying. Now we, I, I will throw a disclaimer out there. Ahrefs is a very powerful uh, platform that we pay for uh, on this. We do see sometimes where they're pretty accurate to each other, but then we see some other times where Ahrefs and Moz are night and day different. Moz is like way behind. It hasn't picked up anything in a while. And Ahrefs has actually given us some really current uh, data. Ahrefs is really good about uh, updating every 30 days or so. Uh, their stuff. So just a little disclaimer from a free standpoint, but that'll give you at least a snapshot to it. Uh, and then, like I said, if you wanted to jump on one of those review calls, we'll be able to pull in some really strong tools uh, and show you right there on the screen. Uh, pop your address right into Ahrefs and we'll be able to kind of go through a bunch of stuff uh, in about that 30 minute time frame to, to give you an idea where you're at on stuff. Anybody else? Any questions? Mickey, you got anything? I see you're unmuted. Yes. So you are talking about this. I, I know we have like several cities and you were saying not to duplicate the content on each one, right? I guess it meant that uh, for each city, you do different pictures, like you, you do tag different pictures specifically for each city. But what about the, con the content on that page? Should it yeah. be so different? first things first, picture, right? I didn't mention this earlier, but when we're talking unique content for the location, just having photos that are actually of that area where you physically went and took that photo in there and it's now geotagged and the meta description to that is showing and pinging that area, that's a big plus to Google. So having background images, having photos of you know, on the page specific for that location, that's going to be a bonus. Uh, the other, the other thing that we encourage on there, Mickey, is very similar, like you've done on some of your other pages, but let's say, give me one of the towns in Baltimore, out, not Baltimore city. Give me one of your other, uh, uh Silver Springs, Silver Springs, right? 
maybe there's something unique to Silver Springs. Maybe there's a, um, let's say there's a, a famous memorial that everybody knows about in Silver Springs. Well, bringing a picture of that in there and writing something in there about that. Maybe there's something specific, you know, a, a, a unique element to real estate in Silver Springs that doesn't exist somewhere else. I had this back in, in our Ohio market where the city of Girard, which is in the overall city of Youngstown, it's on the outskirts of it. The way Girard operated from a tax lien standpoint was completely different than how the city limits of Youngstown operated. So I could write some very specific things around being behind on taxes if you're in Girard mailing district, right? Versus Youngstown mailing district. Does that make sense okay. from a unique, from content standpoint, right? Yes, yes. Same thing, uh, it also comes down to you. Maybe you, you focus on something in Silver Springs that you won't focus on in, and you don't really, your business really isn't kind of geared to be part of in let's say Baltimore City. Maybe Silver Springs, you want to do more single family homes, but mm -hmm. Baltimore, you're more focused on row homes, town homes, right? These type of things. You've got to blend some of that information in there to make it unique to you, the brand, and you, the, the area. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Going once, going twice. So for the videos earlier, you were saying that it's good to have your unique videos into your, into your blogs so that can drive more traffic. Not that the video is going to drive more traffic. What we're doing with the video is we're enhancing time spent on page. If I put, if I wrote a really good blog and it's got some really good information in there, but the person and the, and the individuals that keep landing on it, they're stressed. They don't have the time to read. You know, let's say that blog is 2000 words. They don't want to read all that information. They want the quick stuff. Well, if I've got a two, three, four minute long video that basically is summarizing everything I just wrote in two minutes, they're more likely to click the video and watch the video. But what that does for the algorithm, go back to those ranking factors, time spent on page is a big factor. Google seeing that as they're there for a while. I go back to the example of your website's a store. If somebody's standing in your store for two minutes versus the person that walks in the door and walks out, the person that stood there for two minutes is more valuable to us. They're more likely to catch something that they're intrigued by, want to take it up to the register, maybe buy it, right? Same thing on the website. If I got them there for a minute, two minutes, they're watching the video, there's probably, I might say something in that video that's going to intrigue them that makes them go, you know what? Let me go ahead and fill out the form that I see here on this page to get some more information from them. Or maybe let me click this up here and call them or I see their phone number. Let me go ahead and, you know, call them right now. Or maybe there's a chat bot that pops up on your, your site as well. Well, let me go ahead and chat with them because... They spent enough time, they watched that video, they're, they're kind of buying in now too. They're starting to realize you actually know what you're talking about, but they didn't want to read it before. We do this also, not just with video, you can do this with infographics, images. Um, Liz and Marie is the one that comes to mind. Matter of fact, let me, I wasn't planning on doing this, so I didn't have it pulled up. This is a really good question. And Marie, let me pull it up and then I will share the screen. And here we go. And you know, Sean, what I want to say is we tend to forget that not everybody likes to read. But also, it's just different medium, right? It's just like we we are diverse, and some people are just super visual. And so, for a visual, 
they love video. Like they really do just love videos. Absolutely. So I'm going to share this. And Mickey, give me a thumbs up. You guys see Liz and Marie's site? Yep. Okay. So I'm going to actually notice, right? We, we get on this, this particular page on their site. There's already a video right here. But as I scroll down, right, we got some testimonial videos for me to watch. As I scroll down, everything that this video up here was going to kind of explain to me and what they've written on this site basically gets summed up right here in this infographic. So if I'm more of the visual, I want to sit there and look at it and study it. Th this right here, I'm, it's going to take me a, a little bit to kind of read through this and understand what the heck's going on here. The longer I sit here on this page viewing this, that's time spent on page, right? But then they've even given me the opportunity to download it. And Google's paying attention that, hey, there's a, there's a file behind this action. If somebody clicks on it, they're getting something from this company. Well, they must find value in that for them to want to download it and extract that file that they were giving away. As I come down, right, there's more call to actions here. They, they've actually turned it into a, a complete book. They've even turned it into a video series about this. And this is kind of their leading offer. They, they lead with how they save thousands of dollars when selling their house. But everything on this page is very specific to this right here, how to save you thousands. And what they're doing here is a cost comparison between working with them, selling to an iBuyer, or selling to a traditional real estate agent. And the video explains it deeper, the book explains it as well, right? But you see how there's multiple ways for somebody to engage on that site, and it's keeping me there. There's value there. That will start to rank faster in, because it's giving Google exactly what they want for the user. Does that help answer that a little bit better? Yes, it does. Awesome. Anybody else? Anything? I don't see any in the comments. So, okay. Well, with that, hopefully you guys got some uh, good value out of it. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the